So this morning we are going to glaze our ceramic leaves in a clasp prior. You have taken your um, clay, rolled it into a flat slab. You used a maple leaf stencil to trace around it, cut it out, and with a wooden needle tool, you put your veins on your leaf. I have taken the clay and fired it in the kiln. So now what we have is bisquare pottery. Clay before it goes into the kiln is just basically clay. But once it comes out of the kiln, it is called bisquare because a chemical process has happened and hardened the clay. So if I were to drop this leaf, it would break. It would have to be glued together. Um, if I dropped, say this leaf, it would have to be glued together. Um, this, if I broke it now, the glaze would not hold it together and basically it's kind of just gonna be scrapped. So be very careful with these two hands when you are carrying them. In a moment after the demonstration, you are going to get a piece of scratch paper, a glaze brush, and on your tables, you have a few different things. You have a solid color glaze. So the ones that look like this that have the smear across the front are just solid colors. The guys that look like this or have something taped to the top are the crystal glazes. So basically, it gives you like a little burst. It gives you these speckled effects. Like this. So this one, some of them I rate what glazes are on the back, some of them I do not. This one is pistachio with no color underneath it. This is a solid color. A lot of times you wanna put a solid color underneath and I'm gonna show you about that today. This one is a solid color with a speckle over top. This is the Oriental. Okay. Um, this one is a Scarlet with Firecracker. And this one, since I glazed the bottom, does not have the name underneath. But it looks like I may have just used the Crystal Glaze on it. Okay, so you see the difference between these two. Obviously this has color and this one does not, but do you see how like dry and kind of rough looking this one looks? It's because it doesn't have anything on it. The glaze goes on it and forms almost like a glass-like covering. So what actually happens, you're gonna open these glazes and be like, how in the world does it turn into this? Glaze is like a colored slip basically to put it extremely simple for you that has different chemicals and compounds in it mixed together and it goes on like a paint but it is not paint it's very chalky so you will paint this on and your bisqueware will suck up the moisture from it very very quickly it'll appear to be very chalky and then it'll go in the kiln. It'll reach a certain temperature. These are designed to melt at a certain degree. It will melt and almost like hover on top of your bisqueware while it's hot like that. So it's almost like floating. The thing with the crystal glazes is, there's like these chunks. Do you see that chunk on the brush there? That is what I call my little kitty litter speckles. It's not kitty litter. I just call it that because that's what it reminds me of. But um, those little chunks are like little mini firecrackers that burst and pop when it is being fired, when it reaches a certain temperature. So that's how you get these speckles. Those are from those little chunky kitty litter specks, okay? Um, then as the glaze cools, it sticks to your bisqueware and anything else it is touching. So we're gonna talk about properly cleaning the bottoms of these so that they don't get stuck to the kiln shelf because if it cools on your 
bisquare and the kiln shelf that it's touching, this is gonna get stuck to the kiln shelf and I'm gonna have to take a chisel and a hammer and chip it off of the kiln shelf. The kiln shelves are about yay thick. Your leaf is maybe a quarter inch thick. Guess which one's gonna make it out after the chisel? The kiln shelf, not your leaf. This will get broken, okay? I've only had to do that a handful of times, but it's not, it's not real fun. So I'm gonna pull some of these out of the way. So you have your scratch paper. You may not sit at the table that you're assigned. You're gonna probably move about the room and find the colors that you want that are set up and work from there, okay? If the color's low and it's gone, there's nothing I can do about it. That's what we have to work with, okay? I did a lot of greens and blues. I have one table set up with um, like a yellow and reds. But being that we're late on this project this year, I was trying to stay more spring than fall. Typically this is a fall project and we'll have yellows and oranges and browns and reds. But I'm trying to keep more with the spring theme now. Okay, let's get started. So I just grabbed two off of a table. I'm going to try the Granny Smith and the Lotus Blossom. I've never used this Lotus Blossom. It's new this year, so we'll see how that turns out. All right, I am going to take my paintbrush. And if I need to, I might have to stir up my glaze a little bit. It has been sitting. And I am going to paint this right on my leaf. I'm going to paint the top, making sure that I'm getting in all these little nooks and crannies here. I'm gonna paint the top and the sides of my leaf. Not the bottom, but definitely the sides. There is nothing worse than having a beautiful glass finish on the top of your leaf, and then the sides be all rough and jagged. They would look just like this with no color. You don't want that. Now, being that we're using a red clay, it kind of looks terracotta color, a uh, little brown, you might get some of that color through, which is perfect for leaves because they're natural and occasionally you have browning on leaves. You're going to want to have two coats of this, two nice, even, solid coats. If it's hard to get in any particular area, just kind of like wiggle your brush in there. Almost like standing upright. Try as much as best you can not to get glaze on the bottom of your leaf because you're going to have to take it off anyway. All right, so I don't know if you noticed, but it started to dry very quickly. Look at the edges. Can you guys see those? They're kind of like a lighter chalky green compared to the wet green that is on top. That is because our clay, our bisque wear here is pulling all that moisture out of the glaze very quickly. So it dries quickly, which is great for us. So once I'm done with this, I'm gonna scrape off my extra excess glaze um, at the end of class I'll show you how to clean these up so you can just kind of set this aside 
you're going to want to wash out your brush really good. At some point throughout this process, if your water, you have a table with a ton of people working at it, um, you may have to change your water out and that's fine. But make sure that you clean your brush out pretty good because you don't want to mix the chemicals of this glaze into the container of this glaze. It's okay if they mix on your ceramic piece, but not in the container. You could produce some kind of chemical reaction that would not be beneficial for any of us, okay? <clears throat> so, um, with these crystal glazes, I'm gonna hate to do this, a lot of times the speckles that we're wanting settle to the bottom. You might have to mix these up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. So I guess we'll find out. I'm gonna start in the center and just kinda pull it out. Kind of natural with it. Maybe this side gets a little bit of it. Maybe some of the granny peeks through. This one doesn't have to be so perfect. I kind of think it looks more natural if you let some of the undercolor, which is in this case, the Granny Smith, shine through. And I kind of like that. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna push this to the side for just a second while I'm letting that dry. Because I want to now show you a very important and valuable skill that you will use for the rest of your life that I am really surprised you guys currently don't necessarily do very well. And it is called wringing out your sponge. A dripping, and it's really hard for me to show you with uh, the camera, but a dripping sponge is good for no one. If it's dripping water out, that's no good. So to wring out your sponge, which you have a cup with at least two sponges on your table to wipe the bottoms of your stuff off, you're going to wet your sponge and then you're going to take your hand, place the sponge in your hand and squeeze all of the water out. Do you see that you cannot see my sponge? It is completely enclosed in my hand. And then I open it and there it is. Your sponge is not wet now. It's not dripping wet. I mean, it is wet, but it's more like a damp, moist, okay? which is what you want. You don't want dripping, soaking wet. What's gonna happen if your sponge is dripping, soaking wet and you try to clean off the back of your leaf, the water is going to run underneath and wash off the glaze and all the work that you just did. Okay, so I've wrung out a sponge. I'm going to carefully flip my leaf. And do you see all these little blobs? And do you see how it's coming off the edge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We wanna get that off of there. So these, you, you might say, oh, that's not that big of a deal. Try to get it off. And I just rub in like a out direction, like from center out, rotating what part of my sponge I'm using, like green, 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 I'm rotating. Now I'm gonna use this side part. Okay, if my sponge gets too dirty, put it in the cup, squeeze it a couple times, lift it out of the cup, completely squeeze the water out. In an outward direction, getting all of this off of here. 
It's gonna do you no good if you're wiping it with a dirty part of your sponge. Now, if it's a little bit, like you got like a little bit of cloudiness there, that is not that big of a deal. We don't want globs of glaze on here that it would attach. When you go to flip this back over, make sure that you are not flipping it and setting it in the wet glaze that's on your scratch paper. Actually, once you have this cleaned up, why don't we carry it to the clay table, not on the scratch paper, so we don't have to worry about that and start a pile, okay? Two hands, not on the scratch paper. Your scratch paper is going to be thrown out because nobody needs it. Nobody can use it again. Okay. Actually, I'm going to leave that while I clean up though. I'm going to put my sponges at the end of class. I'm going to put my sponges and my brushes in here. But before I get rid of my sponges, I'm just going to take a sponge and like wipe the ring of your glaze off so that the lid will go on a little easier and so that it'll come off easier. Then this sponge can go right in the cup. The cups can go directly into sink one. They don't need emptied. Mrs. Shuttle will take care of it. These are going to get the lids screwed on real nice and tight and put back on the clay table. So all the glazes at the end of class are going to be on the clay table. All the water containers with the paintbrushes are going to be in sink one. Your tables shouldn't be too bad, but they will need to be dried with a paper towel at the end of class. And all of your projects will be on the clay table at the end of class. I will be firing these in the next week or two, okay, when I have a full enough stuff to put in the kiln. Questions? 